Welcome to Cigar Time, and here we are again Tuesday night at 7.30. And thank you for your previous viewership and your comments on our website. We appreciate everything. Here tonight is our usual cast of characters. We have Rob, John, Paul, Mike, screw it out. Yeah. Stop doing that, you're messing me up. Yeah, don't, don't, don't mess her up. On tonight's show, sure, we're going to smoke and review the San Lutana Oval. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to talk about food and cigars. Mm. We're going to have another installment of Paul in from the field. And we're going to talk about that ever so not known too well subject called plume. Ms. Tia, why don't you tell us about the yes, cigar? Yes, our cigar we're smoking today is a San Lotona Ovo. The wrapper is a Habano 2000 Nicaraguan. The binder is a Nicaraguan. The filler is a Habano Carrillo in Nicaragua. The sizes are Robusto, Toro, Torpe Torpedo, and a Double Corona. And the taste profile is a dominated roasted coffee, mm. some cocoa and dark chocolate, and it's medium body. It's also box pressed. Oh, yes, it's no, it's a soft, soft box, box press. press. It's oh. an oval. It's an oval. Yes, box yes. Press. and yes. real quick for the difference, a soft box press, it's wider, more of an oval shape, whereas a box press has very, like, look like a box, really sharp edges to it. So it's a difference. Maybe that's why they call it the oval. Yes. Yes. Thank very good. Did very I figure that one out yeah, pretty very good? Very good. And now it's time to do the ritual cutting and lighting of the cigar. Well, thank you very much, Max. Done so, job, so we have your permission. Thank you, yeah. Father, Max. Gentlemen and, ladies, Gentlemen and ladies, start your start cigars. Your May I have a... Um, yes. V cut. Yeah, you already knew what I wanted for this one, right? Yeah, you were looking at the <laughs> end. He <laughs> anticipates your every need. What a gem. I'm going to light mine before I start first talking. First topic's food. Thank you, Paul. You are welcome, dear. The only thing better than cigars is food. That's not true. Uh, I would uh, say it's that. a matter of personal like taste. Better. No, I don't. You don't look that's, like you like cigars. That's how I lost a lot of weight. Smoking cigars? Instead of eating. Mm, you forgot you don't have a lighter lighter. Well, thank you for everything. It's been a pleasure. See ya. Oh. Bye. Well. Ooh. As we already let the cat out of the bag, we're going to talk about food and cigars. I like to sort of go around the table and get everybody's opinion on what their favorite food and then what's their favorite cigar after the food, the type of cigar. And it doesn't have to be the brand, just the type of cigar. Rob, why don't you leave this off? Um, I'm a big steak eater, as you can tell. No, you like spaghetti. Uh, I love steak. Um, <laughs> well, you do like spaghetti. I do like spaghetti. Macaroni, <laughs> macaroni as it was called in my house. Uh. With so gravy, gravy or gravy. sauce? No, gravy. gravy. No sauce. <laughs> sauce. Cheese. <laughs> Cheese sauce. Macaroni <laughs> and gravy. That's, oh. what I, that's what I eat. Um, uh, I, after, after I have a nice big steak and potatoes, I like to smoke a fuller-bodied cigar. But any different brand, it doesn't matter. Just a full-bodied cigar. John? If it's edible, I'll eat it. That's for sure. <laughs> I can attest to that. I've seen it. Well, what do you and like to smoke after a nice party meal? Well, you got to have a favorite. It pen, it, do I have a favorite? Yeah. I think sushi's his favorite. Mm, no, I'll go prime rib. And uh, I like uh, a milder cigar after that kind of meal. Okay. Paul? Well, I'm going to go way out into left field here. Uh. Because my absolute favorite thing to eat is goat. Goat. Wow. What? <laughs> Absolute favorite. All, th all things being equal, I eat goat every day. Goat. And it's very easy to find in all of the countries that grow tobacco, so it's good. Okay. They run wild. Just catch them in the swamps. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's swamp goat. And that, yeah. <laughs> and that hobo, novo, swamp. Baba Hoyo. Baba Hoyo. Yeah. Baba what, Hoy, Baba now, now, what kind of, what type of cigar goes well with goat? Generally, I would say full-bodied. I like a, a, a full-bodied cigar, usually some sort of torpedo while I'm eating, and then a slightly milder cigar afterwards. Mike, I hate to do this to you. You've got to follow that. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to backtrack here, and I'm going to go back to my roots. I'm originally some, from Cincinnati, so I'm going to have to say Cincinnati chili would no, have to be what have to come up. What is Cincinnati chili? Everybody's going to be familiar with that. Cincinnati chili is actually, uh, uh, from what I understand, I'm not the chef, 
it's more like a, a Greek chili. It's a Greek, and it's it's more like a meaty spaghetti sauce. And it's usually served over spaghetti. And they have them in, in three ways, four ways, and five ways. You know, it's a chili, spaghetti, and beans, then onions, and then a lots of grated cheddar cheese on the top. What could be bad about that? Oh, I've never, had, I've never had a five-way. That it's is very good. <laughs> 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 you never had a three-way. But a three and a four, yeah. Three and a four, yes. Five-way, no. I can I see you with a four-way. Twi twins? <laughs> a little circus no clown. Twins. Oh, you don't know what you're no, missing. You were there? What, what? <laughs> I was in Cincinnati. <laughs> Why is Cincinnati so known for chili? Well, I, I can't give you the history on it. All I can say is it has a large Greek population. Yeah. And so I think it came from that, and, and that's why um, I'm kind of putting some things together. That's why I think it's more of a Greek spaghetti sauce, mm. but it is fabulous. It's it like is, a meaty sauce. It's a very meaty yeah. sauce. Does it have cinnamon in it? Yes, it does. Yeah. It has oh, cinnamon. No, no, no. You yes, wouldn't like it. A little, a little advice for those of you who decide to experiment with the Cincinnati chili, do not do it before a meeting with a white shirt. No, because <laughs> you get it all. Yeah, it is fun. Do you, meet, Look like a, it is do you meet with white shirts often? Yeah. I used to. Now, they do sell a canned version of it. Oh! oh. <laughs> <laughs> Cincinnati Chili? <laughs> no, no, it, it's actually <laughs> produced by Skyline Chili, which is the, yeah. which is the most popular big, brand big in Cincinnati. And it's not bad, but I don't find the canned one is as meaty as you get when you get it in the store. Oh. Go to a restaurant and get it, it's meatier. Well, what kind of cigar do you like with your big hearty chili? Well, once you do that, you've got to have something fuller body. It's, and, I, and, you know, um, Something like we're smoking the San Lutano now, a nice medium body to me is about as full as I go because it's it's got a lot of spice, it's got the cinnamon in it, it's got cocoa in it, it's very, very, it's a lot of, actually it's a lot of similar flavors that come from a cigar. Yeah. And so you've got to have something that would compete with that, so you wouldn't want a mild cigar. You're going to have to have something that will will, will overcome all those spices and you still be able to taste Stand it. Stand up to the chili. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Scott? Everybody took the good one, so I'm going to try and be a little different. Um, I like a nice barbecue with it. Nice. Oh, <laughs> 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 uh, I didn't know. I didn't know. <laughs> oh, I nice backyard high. barbecue. I like steak on the barbecue. Okay. Uh, personally, I like to go to barbecue barbecue. Mm, I can imagine. What's that, Art? No. Too late. Let's be objective. And I like a full body cigar after my barbecue. <laughs> Miss Tia? Uh, me, I like to smoke, uh, well, eat first. Um, shrimp like steamed shrimp with a nice little salad so something light and then I'll pick up a smaller cigar something more of a mild with flavor cool mm -hmm. well uh, as you could probably tell I like everything mm -hmm. and I like all kinds of cigars so I'm not really I eat less meat than I used to although I have a funny feeling I'll be eating more barbecue soon <laughs> <laughs> and why would that be uh, ash man uh, because of barbecue barbecue mm -hmm. and Which what is barbecue barbecue it's a oh nice my god you sound like a barbecue restaurant right nice up segue. the holy cow, nice segue. right horrible. at the end that of the center from the right. Horsham uh, cigar cigar store cigar <laughs> cigar barbecue like barbecue on your head. Well, let's be objective here let's get on with our show B&B &B. John you should go into use cigars if you ever leave here I want to thank everybody for their comments on food and cigars and I think we should probably move to our next subject which is our continuing installment of Paul out up to his knees in uh, mud and yuck in the fields. No, <laughs> we, the last show, well, sorry, the last show we ended I, I made a comment about you know why should anybody believe you and my, what I intended to do is give Paul a chance to or any of us give us a chance with Paul's background because he, he has a he's a wealth of information and I think it might be nice for people to know why they should listen to him. I just read a lot. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think all that time he spent at Leavenworth, they had like a <laughs> garden there. We had a little garden. Yeah. He uh, learned he how to cultivate the field. I'd love yeah. to hear some and, of his background. And uh, Bob Stroud uh, helped him with yes, exactly. the exactly. pollination. Pollination, yeah. right. <laughs> Jeez. Well, so I have to toot my own horn, I guess. Toot, toot. Okay. Uh, I've been in the tobacco and cigar manufacturing side of the business for almost 18 years now. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been smoking since I was 12 years old. So that's about 50 years. You meant 18. My father gave me my first cigar when I was sitting in a, in a fishing boat with him and he said, here, light this, it'll keep the bugs away. It was a, <laughs> it was a machine made a drugstore cigar and I fell in love instantly. And Little did he know he was steering me down the path for the rest of my life. But he knows now. Uh, currently, 
I own a small plantation in Ecuador. We grow wrapper for other companies, mm -hmm. and we grow wrapper filler and binder a little bit for ourselves. We have a small factory as well. Uh, but I've been producing cigars, blending cigars, and growing tobacco for about 18 years. Excellent. And so what's and today's you've made some topic? Good cigars too. Oh, and <laughs> I'm I'm supposed to be talking yeah, more. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> Where we off? Well, okay. We left <laughs> off with the fermentation Peppers. and stripping completed. <laughs> the leaf was all sorted by color and by where on the plant it came from. And now it's time to make the cigar taste the way it's supposed to. Yeah. And there's really only one way to do that, and that's called blending. And blending is, in one sense, a very simple process. When I do it, I sit down with one roller in the factory and every kind of tobacco we can put our hands on, all laid out on a table, and we just select different leaves and say, let's combine this and this, put it in a binder like that and a wrapper like that, roll it up, taste it, take some notes, put a few away to see how they age, and start all over again. And just do that over and over and over. I would love that to go sounds like an awesome do job. Do you I mix mean, it the same way, or are you trying different things? Different like things, things all the time. So after they finish one, well, well the, usually they'll roll three. One for me to try immediately, two to put away and let develop. Then I'll take the same blend out of my notes and say, okay, let's take this leaf out and put that leaf in and see how it changes it. And you just keep doing that. I usually do it for two weeks at a time. Now, oh. now, now I've heard of something called a blend book. Is that what you're doing when you're doing that? Is you writing down all this stuff and making your blend well, book we, at that point in time? We call it the Bible, but it's the same thing. Okay. It, it is the book that has the master list of all of the combinations I've ever tried, what worked about them, what didn't work about them, and every detail about each leaf that's in the blend. How big is that book? book? That book is enormous. I actually, wow. I first I had heard of it was with Toronto and when they launched the vault. The I vault, didn't realize right. that everybody did that. But you have to. You I, have to. Yeah. When you think about it, yes, you probably should. Yeah. But uh, the blend, the blend book is is crucially important. So, the idea is. Usually a blender starts with a, uh, with a target. They have a particular flavor profile and they want to create a cigar that suits that flavor profile. So they'll have initial ideas about which kinds of tobacco might work and then they have to experiment with it. And you have to understand that the number of variables that you're dealing with when you're blending tobacco is phenomenal. Uh, you may remember earlier in our discussions we talked about how many different kinds of tobacco there are. In total there are actually 64 different breeds of tobacco and they all taste different. And every one of them will taste different depending on where you grow it. So just as an example, the wrapper on this great San Latano is a Habano 2000 grown in Nicaragua. Habana 2000 grown in Ecuador is a totally different leaf, even though it comes from the same seeds. And in Cuba, it's different than that, and so on and so on. So, so you, you take your, your 64 breeds of tobacco, and you have eight major countries doing most of the tobacco growing, and you've now got a lot of variables. And then you take Velado and Seco and Viso and Lajero from each of those, and you have even more variables but fermentation adds the magic variable because you can change that. You remember you asked about the temperature? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can change the temperature by just a couple of degrees and it will dramatically change the flavor of the tobacco as a result. Mm. So you've got a limitless palette to paint with when you're creating a cigar blend. The biggest challenge in blending, however, is recognizing that you have a product that comes from the ground. It's a natural product, it's alive, it's organic, and it changes. It changes from year to year, it changes from crop to crop, and what you have to do when you develop a blend is develop, in effect, a backup blend for each of the leaves in that blend so that if the crop is not right or if the flavor varies a little bit one year to the next, you can compensate in the blend so that the resultant cigar doesn't change. And that really just takes a tremendous amount of experience. 
and remembering what all the different kinds of leaves taste like so you can decide what you want to use to reach the net effect that you want. That has always amazed me, you know, given what you just said, that there are all the different variations in Mother Nature, how a company like Padron or Fuente can keep a single cigar tasting the same year after year after year. It just yeah, it, how, it, how, it, how do they arrive at the consistency? Is that due to the blending? Is that due to the... There are a couple of, of elements to that. One is Fuente, but to a much greater extent Padron, are vertically integrated. So that means it is the same mm. company controlling the fields, the fermentation, the drying, the blending, and the ultimate rolling of the cigar. So they're able to be very consistent because they have their hands on the whole thing start to finish. The other way that they get to be consistent is this alternative blending concept. Mm -hmm. So in a year where one element of their blend changes even a little bit, they already know what else they can do that will result in a cigar that's indistinguishable from the first one. Yeah, it's always amazing. It's the a fascinating It subject. really is. And, and the people that are good at it are legendary in yeah. this business. They're yeah. the names that, that we all know. There, there are people like Pepin Garcia. There are people like uh, uh, Benji Menendez. Oh, Jose uh, Sejas. Jose Sejas. Uh, uh, AJ Fernandez. Cipuente, Ramon Cipuente. When he was alive. Yeah, when he was alive. Uh, and I'll add Armando Ramos, even Armando though nobody Ramos. ever heard of him. Um, I've heard of him. <laughs> <laughs> We've all heard of him. <laughs> anyway, that's how cigars get to taste the way they do, and that's why blending is so important. And it's something that you should think about when you smoke a cigar. Not only were there a lot of people involved in making it, but there was an artist sitting somewhere really creating something out of his own passion and understanding of the leaf. Yeah, what we call a blend is what uh, other people would call a recipe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. right. Yeah. It's yeah. probably the closest. Like analogy. a chef. Yeah. Like a yeah. master right. chef. And that's, and that's exactly why, you, you know, keep the notes. if we have 4,500 different cigars in there, that every single one of them has a different flavor. Mm -hmm. well, yeah. A lot more than 4,500. <laughs> well, I just picked the number. But well, yeah. more like 450,000. There you go. And when you think about all of the different flavors that you get out of a cigar, mm -hmm. but whether you call them things like coffee and cocoa, or whether you just taste different things and you don't know what to call them, if you think about all of those different flavors, when a good cigar maker created that cigar, not one of those flavors is an accident. Mm -hmm. That means he actually sat and said, I want a note like this, and a, right. a little undertone in the back of the tongue like that, and I'm going to get it from this leaf and that leaf combined. It's amazing. It, it's, it is. It's a it's fascinating It's a science. Thing. It's a science and an art. It's both. Yeah. 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 Really yeah. It's really yeah. a start. Paul, I want to thank you again. Thank My you pleasure as always. I mean, it, I, did, I could listen to you go on for hours and hours. But and unfortunately, and I could talk for hours. Believe me, I know it. <laughs> <laughs> and we have. But not on, unfortunately, not an half hour TV program. Uh, no. Let me just uh, kind of introduce something that we've not covered before on our shows. Um, this show is shot live in our Horsham store. So if you're hearing background noises, people talking, phones ringing, because the store's open. We try to shoot it at a slow time of day towards closing, but you know, you're gonna hear a little background, you're gonna hear the phone occasionally, customers talking, doors opening. Joe so, uh, What's that? Joe screaming on the phone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Give me more cigars, I want that one, I want that one. <laughs> Joe pulling out his hair. Yeah, so. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, Joe, we're talking about you. Mr. Clean, I don't think you've got much left. Mm. Well, I, the, I, the, the next subject I'd like to cover is, is something that's near and dear to my heart, but I'm gonna let, uh, I know Scott also likes to talk about this. It's the subject of plume. A lot of you will not know what plume is. You're about to find out. A lot of, a lot of you mistake it for um, molt. Uh, plume is a, for lack of a better term, it's a crystal that uh, uh, ends up on the outside of a cigar. And it is a signal or a sign that that cigar is actually perfect. It's, it's ready to be smoked. Um, what happens is there are lots of oils in the tobacco, and when those oils uh, start to seep or leach to the surface or the wrapper, those oils start to crystallize. Um, and that is, a, again, it's a sign that the cigar is perfectly aged, and it is, there's never a better time to smoke the cigar. And I'm sure I gave a very quick analysis, but there, I'm sure there's a lot more to it, but... No, I mean... We should talk about distinguishing between yeah. plume and mold. That's yeah. a great idea. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Plume comes plume off, mold you doesn't. can just wipe off. It'll yeah. come off very easily. Right. If it's mold, it's not going to come off. I know you've all heard me talk about this, but I'll bore you again one more time. When I was a kid back in the Stone Age, 
I used to haunt the downtown Philadelphia tobacconist back in the day. There were many, many of them down there. And it was right around the time of the Cuban cigar embargo, mm -hmm. but yet you could still sell Cuban cigars what remaining inventories were in this country. And I used to go around and, and look for cigars that had plume on them. And I'd try to find like somebody very young behind the counter, because I was all of about 15 and 16. Oh. And, yeah, that was back, there, there were no laws <laughs> about age. And I would look for a pluming cigar, and I'd take it up to the clerk, and you know, back in the day, Cuban cigars were 50 and 60 cents a piece. Yeah, now you know how old it was. And I would try to say, hey, the cigar has mold on it. Can I have it for a quarter? And about half the time, I'd get away with it. So I got a whole load of good-tasting cigars for, you know, nickels and dimes, yeah. basically, compared to what yeah. you normally would have paid. I just wish I had to put some of them away. It's funny. There are certain cigars They wouldn't have tasted good now. No, nah, they would have been too old. Yeah. There, are certain, yeah. there are certain cigars that I know get the plume, and I will, I will show customers, like the, the Romeo, too. I will show yeah. them. I'll, I'll pull yeah. out why, why does it... Uh, cigars that are in a tube age faster than... Well, they don't yeah. age faster, well, but they, they, plume, plume, they, plume, they plume, faster. plume faster. They plume faster because the air isn't exchanging yeah. Yeah. at all. So it's yeah. not like keeping it in a regular humidor. It's going to stay humid, but it's sealed up in that tube. So they the oils have nowhere yeah. to go. They can't evaporate away, so they crystallize, crystallize on the surface of the yeah, cigar. That's why it's always better, if you can, to age your cigars in a sealed box because you'll bring that plume to the surface faster in a sealed airtight box than you will just throwing them into the humidor. I Oops. noticed the VSGs get a lot of plume too. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. it, Why, it relates to that. The, oil, get, the get oiliness of the wrapper is, is a real factor, and I'm talking about the natural oiliness, not, right. not enhanced. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, certain types of wrappers are just not going to plume as much as others. Connecticut rarely does. Yeah, yeah rarely ever yeah. plumes. Yeah. So if you see a plume, pick it up. And just yeah. the, the fastest and easiest way to tell whether it's plume oh, or mold yeah. is, like everyone has said, try to wipe it. But also, mold tends to be furry mm -hmm. and plume tends to be sparkly because it is a crystal. Crystal, yeah. 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 Okay, I think that was a great explanation. And now it's time to review our San Lotano Oval. Miss Tia, why don't you start it out? Um. I was actually impressed. I didn't think I was going to like it, um, but I actually do. I'm a big fan of the band. I think that's very uh, cute. He always likes the I band. I love the band, and he has his name on it. I think that's, you know. That's cute. That's very cute. Yeah, and it's in yellow. Too. Yeah. So it's yellow is a good color. It's adorable. My, my, <laughs> my favorite type would be a box press, but since this is not a soft box press, I think I actually like this a little bit better now. So I oh no rating yet. Just no rating. Yeah, no, no. So it's a good. I like one. I like the mouthfeel on this. It's different. Yeah. It's, it's you a like very the unusual. Feel? Yeah, it's it's a it's a nice medium uh, medium to full bodied cigar. Fantastic flavors. I yeah. I, yeah. I, yeah. Um, the custom the customers in my store and myself are very big fans of AJ Fern anything AJ Fernandez makes. Yeah, I love. And He's very hot right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. sure. We noticed is. that. Yeah. Yeah. Mike, I love this cigar. Really? And, and it's yeah, way no, strong. It's not, it's not. It is. It I almost is. fell out the chair. But you know what? It it it's a, it may be powerful, but it's smooth in its power. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's yes, not. It is. it is very smooth in its power. It's a very good blend. So that works really well for me. And in, in, in probably one of the most full-bodied cigars I really enjoy. It's, it's a really good cigar. Paul, well, I agree with everything Mike said, and what I really like about it, the word I would use is balance. The cigar is perfectly balanced, so it has the spice and it has the strength, but it lets all the other flavors come through. And I think, I think other than maybe a Padron, this is a quintessential Nicaraguan Puro. Yeah. Hmm. Well, what do you think about the band? <laughs> <laughs> I already said it. I think it's adorable. <laughs> John? I find that the... Uh, coffee, cocoa, and dark chocolate flavors really come through for me, and that's what I really like about this cigar. Well, I know where this discussion's going. Rob? Are you done? Oh, I'm sorry. Sure. I, no. <laughs> no, I would never, you know, love hearing age talk. before beauty. Uh, I agree with uh, with John. Uh, the, the chocolate flavor uh, comes through. Um, it's very, very smooth. Uh, I also agree with Scott. I like the way it feels when you hold it. Yeah. It won't roll off the table. That's, just, that's nice. <laughs> that's nice. <laughs> yeah. Especially that's with a slanted table. Yeah. That's You're a real plus. It's a plus. Right. If you um, think about it, if you've been drinking a lot, a cigar that doesn't roll off the table is important. It's actually pretty good, yeah. So, Not uh, quite sure why, yeah. but you know. this, this is a fantastic cigar. 
I guess that leaves me, huh? Yeah? It does. It does. I, I can't really add anything. I mean, you pretty well all summed it up very nicely. I mean, I agree with everything that was said, and I, I kind of know where all this is headed. Mm -hmm. So, uh, in reverse yeah. order, we'll start yeah, the, with you. It'll we'll start with me. Yeah. Well, we'll start with me. I give it a 4.75. Really? Yeah, and I'll tell you wow. why. Wow. I'll tell you why. This, I don't find the cigar to be on the higher end of no. medium. I find it to be right in the medium for right. me. For right. me. Yeah. And, and it, it, I think someone, I forgive me if I don't give you a shout out, whoever said it was well bound, they hit it right on the money. This is a very, very well bound cigar. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, it, it quintessential Nicaraguan, I think Paul put it, it, it right, I agree 100%. Mm. I give it a 425. I'll go with the same with Rob. I'm right in the middle, four and a half. Okay. Agree with Paul, four and a half. Yeah, fantastic cigar, four and a half. Yeah. 4.25. Wow. Okay. Nice. That's I think so. Yeah, it did really well. So yeah, everyone liked it. It did. It did. Because I yeah. thought I was expecting yeah. it to be stronger, yeah. harsh, and it was very yeah, it's smooth. It's very smooth. It's very yeah. smooth. Yeah. It's smooth just like the way it feels. It feels smooth. Probably, what do these cigars retail for? I mean, in the ballpark oh, of Which I thought so. 758 Yeah, it's like $8. Right, so it's not a super no, high no. premium, like, right? It's like for the quality of the cigar? Yeah. yeah. It's like $8, $8.70. Yeah. It's fantastic. Mm -hmm. It's not I mean, the cheapest cigar in the world, but on no. the price-value ratio, yeah. it's, yeah, it's great. Very it's ding, ding, ding. I mean, it gets five bells for me. I mean, yeah. it hits all the whistles. They also yeah. make Maduro and a, and a Habano. It also great. Right, it comes in a Habano and uh, well, not the old Maduro. Maduro. The old sure. comes only this way in Maduro. Well, right. Right. Yes, right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Fernandez knows what he's doing. He yeah. does. Well, I want to thank that blending art. I want to thank the panel for their comments on the San Lotano. I think we all sort of agree that it's a high quality. A reasonably priced, great cigar. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, come into I cigar cigars and buy one. You're still in my lines now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> this is the part of the show where, where as Paul said, uh, please patronize us. We need the business. How many stores do we have? Oh, we have seven stores. Where are they? Reading. Colmar. Phoenixville. Horsham. Freehold. Oxford New Valley. Jersey. Did we mention? Westchester. Westchester, New Jersey. Our <laughs> new store in Westchester, Delaware. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. no, it's Westchester, Pennsylvania. <laughs> and uh, you can see everything and a lot more. And please leave your comments, even criticism, suggestions at our website, which is cccigars.com. That's cigars.com. <laughs> By the way, if you go to the website, the first thing you'll see there is a little button that says get 15% off just for hitting this button. And when you hit it, it's a chance to give us your email address, get on our mailing list for uh, events and specials, and get a coupon for 15% off next time you come in. Also a free cigar. And yeah. a free cigar, fresh hand roll. And that email is only used by us. We don't give it to anybody else. And send the photos in for the hottie page, ladies. Oh, the oh, hottie yeah. page. Yeah, hottie I, I screen them there. personally. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think it's time to say goodbye. It is. <laughs> say goodbye. Bye-bye for now. Bye. Goodbye, guys. Smoke happy and smoke often. And remember, it's been another beautiful day in paradise. Ciao, everybody. And thank you very much for watching. And we'll see you next week.